Hi, and welcome to part two of The Simple Way to Play Backgammon. This is a multi-part series to teach you really basically and simply how to play backgammon. I've taught a lot of kids for many years. I've been playing since I was a kid myself. A lot of people look at this game and think it's a very, very confusing, overwhelming game. And I'm here to tell you that it's not. And I'm here to tell you that if you just watch my few lessons, you will pick up how to play this game very, very simply. Okay, in the last lesson, I talked about what everything on the board was. I talked about the dice, I talked about the points, I talked about the pieces, and I talked about the goal of the game. The goal as the player with the white pieces to, is to move down the board, down this, and down this. Now the goal in this particular lesson we're going to do here today is just to get an understanding of the moving of the pieces and get a feel for the flow of the game. I'm not going to talk strategies just yet. We're not going to talk about gambling, which is dealing with this. I'm not also going to talk about how to win the game, which once you get all 15 pieces in here, you begin taking it off. As I said in the previous lesson, usually you start a game by each player rolling one dice. The person with the higher dice actually gets to take the whole move of both dice, and then the other player gets their turn and so on. So let's start by rolling dice. And it looks like white has one <clears throat> with a five and a one. And again, we're not going to deal with strategies here. Um, once, if you watch later uh, lessons, there is almost an opening move for almost every single combination you can get. I'm not going to deal with what these opening moves are right now. Let's just practice on the counting. So we have a five and a one. Here, uh, is two pieces up here. Our goal is to get them around, down, and all into this area here so we can begin taking them off. And while this piece, while a piece of, uh, can move one, a piece, however, cannot move one, two, three, four, five, because there are two black, uh, two or more black pieces here, and you cannot land on a piece that has two or more of the opponent's pieces. Um, now, if you wanted to move one, you could move one, but you could not move the other one five. If you wanted to move one and then also move it, that same piece, the move of five, one, two, three, four, five, you could do that. So moving a piece from here to here is an acceptable move. <clears throat> Let's look at a one and a five right here. You cannot move a piece one, but you could move a piece one, two, three, four, five, and put a piece here. Um, and, and just like in the earlier example, you could then also move it one more and for a total of six. So you could put a piece here, but you just would, it would be as if you moved it five and then one more. Technically, it's not as if you moved it one and then five more because you really can't rest it on the one. If you had wanted to move this five and move another one of these pieces one, you obviously could not do that. Now let's look here. Here is uh, five of my pieces on this point. I could not move one, two, three, four, five because the other player has two or more pieces here. I could at most move this one, but then I would have to move another piece five. Now this piece, now these three here could either move one and I can move another one, one, two, three, four, five. So I can move one, one, and one, five, or I could also move one piece, six. <clears throat> now, I, again, I'm not gonna get into what are the better opening moves, so I'm just gonna practice by, by showing you a basic move. I'm gonna move this one, one, and then I'm gonna continue to move, and I cannot move this one, five, so I'm gonna continue to move this one, five. The board has been flipped. It's the other player's turn. They've rolled a four and they've rolled a three. Now here are their pieces. Again, the board is laid out exactly the same. It's just reversed for the point of uh, a player versus player game. But their goal is the same, to move it down here, down, in, and fill it all up in here and then take it off. Now, they have the option of moving one four and moving one th and their other one three. Can they move one piece one, two, three, four? Yes. Can they continue to move that piece three? One, two, three. No, they cannot. So if they were to move these, you can move one three or one four or one three and four. Now let's come down here. This could move one, two, a piece could come here on three, a piece could come here on four. 
<clears throat> could this piece move three and then four? One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Yes, it can. Because while you can't rest on another player if they have two or more pieces, you can rest on yourself. And even though it looks like the pin, uh, the point is full because there's five, there's no um, maximum number that uh, needs to rest. So this could absolutely rest here at the three and the four. And just so to go through it, we also could move one of these three here, one of these three, four there. We could also move one of these three here. We could also move one of these four here. And also we can move any combination of three and four across the board. Um, I'll give you another thing. You could also move this one three plus four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Now this puts you on top of your opponent. It will put your opponent on the board and you'll be here. So that's also an option as we saw in the other uh, lesson. You can take somebody off the board. But I'm not going to focus on that in this one. I'm just going to focus on the basic movements. So let's move this one, four, and let's move this one, three. Again, this is going against a lot of strategies um, on how to play this game, but we're going to get to that later. This one is just to work on the move. All right, so the board's been flipped. Let's roll the white dice, and it's a six and a three. So here is this one, can it move six? One, two, three, four, five, six. It could, and it could partner up with that. Could it move another three? One, two, three. Yes, it could. And it could take this one off the board. Can this one move three? Yes. But can this one move six? One, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> no, it cannot, because there's already two or more here. So while it could take one off here, it can't do this. Now it could go one, two, three, and then continue one, two, three, four, five, six, and it would take off this piece and continue. And that's the move we're going to do. So we're going to move one, two, three, which is going to take that piece and put it on the bar, and then it can move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now it brings me to the black player's turn. Again, the board's been switched. And now that there's a piece on the board, Whenever a piece is taken off the board, regardless of where it is, it always has to go back to the beginning. And what is the beginning? Well, remember how I said that the pieces start here, they come this way, they go down, and then they go this way, and they all end up here? Well, this is the farthest quadrant, so this is where they're going. So when I roll this dice, the first thing I, well, actually, what I did is I got double fours, but it's showing me double fours isn't just two, you get double the doubles. So you get to get four, four times. So this is a great example to jump into fours, but before I do that, because what you would do is you look at what you have on the dice, and if you got a one, it would have to go here. If, it, if you got a two, it would go here, three here, four here, five here and six here. But since this is not an open spot, if I had rolled a six, I could not put a six here. <clears throat> Let's say I had rolled a, a six and a one. My option would have been to either put it here on a six or here on the one. Let's say I had rolled a double six. Well, my option would be to only put it on the sixes, and actually I wouldn't be allowed to even put it on the board. My turn would immediately be over without moving a piece because these are blocking the six point. In this case, I have double fours, so I can only put it on the four. If I had a four and a two, I could have the option of putting it on a two or putting it on the four. And again, how we're counting that is this is the first pin from the end, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. So we're able to put it, in this case, I'm going to put it on the four. Now, because I have doubles, I don't just have one more four to go. I actually have the total of three more fours to go. And again, all pieces are wide open. I can move this one four. I actually can move it four, plus I can move it another four and take him off as revenge, I suppose. Can I move it another four? One, two, three, four. No, I can't. So I can't take all three fours with that. Now, what about this? Could this be moved four? One, two, three, four. No, it cannot because of this. Can this be moved four? Yes. 
Can this be moved four? One, two, three, four. Yes. And can this be moved four? Yes. Now, I have three more fours to go, and it's up to me to decide what I'm going to do with them. So what I'm going to do is talk about the next strategy, which is as you play the game, the best thing you want to do is try not to keep open men. I'm black, and I have an open one here, and I have an open one here. And the reason you don't want to keep open uh, men are because of the very reason that if the other player lands on it, they can take you off the board and you have to start at the beginning again. So one of the first basic strategies um, beyond just knowing how to move your pieces around the board is to not keep your men open as much as possible. So in this particular case, I'm going to move this guy four. One, two, three, four. By doing it, he's no longer open. And, I, and because I had double fours, I didn't just, I've, I've taken two of my four, I have two more fours to go. Now, again, I don't want to, I could move this piece here and this move piece here and take him off again. That's fine. I would wind up leaving three pieces open on the board. So I'm going to show you maybe a different strategy instead of moving it four. Uh, move, uh, moving that I'm, and leaving so many men open. I'm going to move this one four. And I'm going to move that one four as well. And by doing it, those pieces have advanced, but they're still not open. There's, they, they can't be taken off. Okay. So now the board is switched. It's White's turn again. And White got a five and a four. And again, White still has one man in here. And they have to start moving it around to get all their pieces in here. Now, if you look here, you'll notice that there's a point made here. There's the point here. And there's the point here. And one of the strategies that's starting to happen is this piece, if he doesn't move soon, he's going to get stuck. And he might not have many options of dice rolls to get out of here. So in this particular case, I have an option to move him one, two, three, four. I cannot move him one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to move him four. But I also then can move him the same five. One, two, three, four. Four, five. Now this gets him out of the fray of what looks like could be very difficult to land on. Think about this. In the next roll, if I got a one, he couldn't move. If he got a three, he couldn't move. If he got a four, he couldn't move. That's three of the three of the six possible combinations of a dice. This guy can't move. And who knows? Maybe these will wind up coming down here or here. This guy could get stuck. And that's one of the things you don't want to happen in backgammon is get a piece so far back at the beginning that you can't bring him around to get him in here because you can't take any of your pieces off until you have all your pieces here. So I'm going to take it opportunity now to advance him. One, two, three, four, five. Now I know what I just said about trying not to keep a man open, but in this particular case, I'm going to have to risk leaving him open because... I don't, I'm making a decision about whether or not I can wait or whether I can just flee. And I'm looking actually down here at the bottom and I'm realizing that he only has two men here. Unless, he, if I put this piece there like I think, then these guys can, if they can get a three, they can get me. But if they get a four, five, or six, or anything, a four, or five, if they, unless they get a three or a one and a two, I mean, a uh, two and a one or some combination to get me, they might not get me. So I'm, gonna, I'm taking the risk that they can't get me. Okay, now the board is turned. Let's see them roll. And look what we have here. This is the board reversed. I, I, I had moved the piece here. And remember, I was worried that these places, these pieces might not be able to get me. Well, they have a three. So if he would like, he could go one, two, three, and get me after all. Now, here's the pros and cons of him doing that. He could move one, two, three, but then he has a man open. He has a lot of open men on the board. He's got one up here. He would have one there that's open, and he'd have one here that's open. Now, he has a three and a one. He has another option to move one, two, three, take me off, and then keep going one to keep him safe. He would still have two open men on the board, but he's taken me off. Let's see his other options. Could he move this? One. Yes. He could move it one, two, three, but he can't move the, the piece after that. Could this move? 
one. No. Can this move one, two, three? No. So these pieces can't move at all. Now obviously these pieces can all move, but what we're trying to do to get all our pieces off the board, since that's the goal of the game, is we have to move them around, down, and out. So it's best to move them. Would it be worth moving these pieces? One, or one, two, and three. Yes, I suppose, but I'm actually going to say that for the points of this lesson, let's, let's start opening this up and really understanding. One, two, three, it can take me off. And then he has the option, since this number, this cannot move anymore because it can only move one. But for his last one, he could move this up. But I'm going to suggest <coughs> that he's going to move this there. And what he did is he made one less piece open on the board. And you, re you see how this is starting to work. You, you, start, you see the basic mechanics of this game. Um, with, a, with a white on the board, the first thing he, ha he has is a 5 or a 2 we've rolled. So he has the option of putting this on the 5, or putting, putting this on the 2, or putting this on the 5. If I put it on the 5, then I still have a 2 to make. It could be the same piece, putting on the 5, and then moving 2. It could be this piece going on the two, and no matter what I do, you still have the option of using the other piece. Remember, there's pieces here. And so, to get back to the strategy, if I'm white, I have an option of either putting this on the five or the two, but I'll tell you what I have. I've got an open piece here, and I know that black is coming around, and technically black could get a one, two, three, four, and take this off. So if I'm white, at this point I've already had pieces taken off the board, what I'm really thinking is, how do I protect myself here? Well, I know I have to put the piece back on the board. I, I can't play until I've placed the two or the five. So my determination of where should I put this piece, the two or the five, really is going to be based on what my next move is. And I've decided, just to give, uh, which is that I'm going to put this on the two. And the reason I'm going to do that is because now I still have a five to make. And while I could go one, two, three, four, five, and move it to there, I'm afraid, actually, that I could be taken off by any of these pieces. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put it on the two, and I'm going to move my piece by itself five. One, two, three, four, five. And here's the reason I'm doing that. Because there's no other black pieces here to take me off. Once I've passed the last black piece that they have, I'm sort of in the clear. And now the play, it has switched. So you can see how it's starting to move like that. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment, and I will answer. In the next lesson, we're going to continue on with this theory, but we're going to start to add in some strategies, some real um, important and basic strategies so that you start to understand as you look at your dice and you look at your choices of moves truly what the best moves are. Because really when you get into the game of backgammon, the more you're able to think about playing, moving your pieces offensively and defensively, the more you're minimizing the risks of being taken off the board or of being stuck behind other pieces. And that's how you win the game. And that truly is the essence of what backgammon is. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Look for the next segment with more bait with more strategies.